Today, I'm going to be helping one of you guys to get the right PC build. I'm going to take your PC part picker list and change the things that I do not like. That way you get the perfect PC with no bottlenecks. This is a boost my build video and this video idea is from Jason from the PC Builders YouTube channel. So big shout out to him. I am Valentino and the link to the boosted PC will be down below in the video description alongside the instructions in case you want to get featured in the next boost my build video. With that being said, let's start. So we have George here who says, Hey Valentino, I need your help. My budget is around $2,000 to $2,400 max. I want to play some heavy titles like The Last of Us Part 1, Cyberpunk 2077, Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't mind turning on the LSS if needed, which is the upscaler from Nvidia for those who don't know. Also easier games like CS2 and Fortnite. There are no aesthetic preferences. I have a 4K 144Hz monitor, which is great. And let me know what you think about my list. So let's take a look at your list. So please do not put this PC together, it is not going to be a good purchase for you and if you end up buying this PC you are not going to get the performance that you want. First I will talk about the things that I do like about this system because even though I wouldn't put this PC together I think you did an amazing job in some of these components. For example the case you went with the Fantex XT Pro Ultra, I really like this one, it has 4 principal fans, great airflow and the price is only $70. Then I do like the motherboard selection as well with the ASUS Tab C790 Pro. I do not know if I would put it in the boosted build just because I wouldn't go with the CPU that you went with the i9 14800K especially because you didn't specify anything about content creation and if you just want to do gaming the i9 14900K is definitely not a gaming CPU. If you're going to get this CPU I recommend you at least being a professional content creator and then you went with a CPU cooler that's not going to be enough in the Corsair IQ H100X. Now this is a great all-in-one liquid cooler but you have to keep in mind that this is a 240mm one which is not going to be enough for a powerful CPU like the i9 14900K. It is a very power hang with CPU. And then you went with 64 gigs of DDR5 memory, CL46 timings which is a very slow kit and trust me for gaming you do not need anything more than 32 gigs of RAM, even more than 16 gigs of RAM but if you want to do streaming and other tasks I think 32 gigs of RAM is the sweet spot. Then you went with a 1TB Gen4 SSD which is a good choice however at this price point I would like to see at least 2TB and then you went with a 1000 watt power supply from Corsair which I do like because it's 80 rated really good quality but the price right now is very high at $180. The thing that I don't like about this system at all is the GPU choice. You said you want to play at 4k games like Cyberpunk 2077, I'm guessing you want to play that game on high to ultra settings and yes if you turn on DLSS you are going to be just fine but if you want to play native resolution the 4070 Super is not a 4k graphics card. Yes it can run some games at 4k 60 plus FPS on average but it's not ideal because you get 12 weeks of VRAM which is already not enough for some games at 4k and if you want to play at 4k in the future with future AAA titles which I'm guessing you do because of the type of games that you play right now it's just not going to be enough so I recommend you looking for at least 16 gigs of VRAM when talking about 4k resolution and a 4070 Super is a great graphics card for a system that's going to be around 12 to 14 hundred dollars but definitely not close to 2000 bucks you ended up being slightly under your budget which is fine but I would recommend you spending a bit more and getting a much better system and that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to boost your build. I will also show you the level of performance that my build is going to get against your build. That way you see the performance difference that you are losing on. Now this is the build that I ended up going with. It is slightly more expensive than yours at $2013 but you are going to be getting a huge FPS difference when it comes to this system compared to your PC. And why is that? Well because of the CPU and GPU combo. For the CPU I I went with the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D which is arguably the fastest CPU in the market even faster than the 14900K in most games especially in high CPU demanding titles. Now if you want to do content creation of course the i9 is better but it's also much more power hungry. The 7800X 3D is very power efficient and you do not need a big cooler. Now talking about the cooler I went with the Deepcool LS520. This is a 240 all-in-one liquid cooler and in this case it's going to be more than enough because we have a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. Now you can also go with the CPU air cooler if you want. I went with the liquid cooler just because 
I think you do like liquid coolers since you pick one for your build, but you can get away with a much cheaper cooler than this one if you really want it. I also kept your case in the Fantex XT Pro Ultra because I do like the price to performance for that case. And the most important component is the GPU and I went with a 4080 Super, which is much, much, much better than the 4070 Super that you were going with. And I will talk about the level of performance in a second, but before doing that, I want to show you the rest of the components. Then I changed the motherboard, of course, because the last motherboard that you chose is not compatible with Ryzen. And for that reason, I went with a Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elite motherboard, which is amazing. And here you can fit a Ryzen 9 7900X as well, if you end up switching to a more video editing and content creation type of CPU. But for gaming, the 7800X 3D, as I said before, is arguably the fastest CPU in the market. Then I went with two terabytes of Gen 4 SSD in the Crucial B3 kit, and you were going with one terabyte, so here you have more storage and more space for those high demanding titles that you want to play. And then I went with 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, 6000 megahertz CL30 timings, which is much faster than the memory kit that you were going with, and this is going to matter in games like Fortnite or CS2, so you are going to be achieving higher FPS in those games, which you told me that you want to play. And last but not least, I also chose a 1000 watt power supply, but this one is the Be Quiet Pure Power 12M. This one is 80 rated as well, so the best quality out there, and it's going for 130 bucks, so it's much cheaper than the one that you were going with, and it's going to provide you with the same high quality. So now I want to show you the level of performance that you were missing on by going with your system. Here you can see a 12 m average from TechSpot, this is one of the latest ones, so it's pretty fresh data. This is a 12 m average on high to ultra settings in very high demanding titles. So the 4070 Super that you were choosing was able to average 60 FPS, which is not bad, but remember you get 12 gigs of VRAM and 60 plus FPS is not ideal in my opinion, because for high demanding titles I would be looking at 70 to 80 plus FPS on average. And the 4080 Super was able to average 85 FPS, which which is an amazing number for these type of games and if you want to play esports games such as CS2 or, or Fortnite, you will be achieving 240 or even 360 plus FPS on average in competitive settings, which is going to be way more than enough because you have a 144Hz 4K monitor. So this system is much better than the one that you were going with, you will be achieving 25 plus FPS on average, even more because I went with a Ryzen 7 7700K with XVD which is slightly faster than the 14900K when it comes to gaming. And then if you turn on ray tracing at 1440p, which is very similar in terms of performance to 4K with DLSS on, you will be achieving 76 FPS on average with the 4070 Super and over 100 FPS on average with the 4080 Super. So as you can see, a much faster system with the one that I'm going with. And yes, it's a bit more expensive, but it is going to be much better. To recap it for you, you get a system with more storage for you to download more games, much faster performance in terms of both CPU and GPU and you make sure that the CPU temps are going to be fine because you are not going with a very power hungry CPU and a cooler that's not going to be enough to cool down the CPU. So I hope that you feel like your build is boosted and as I said before the instructions will be in the description alongside the PC that I recommend for $2000 and also you have my PC community where you will get PC help in case you want me to take a look at your specific situation and give you the perfect PC for your budget and your needs and if you found value in this video leave a like and subscribe it goes a long way and i will appreciate it a lot thank you guys for watching thank you for the support and i will see you on the next